biohacking and sex. Intriguing. <laughs> Many women chose a partner while they were on birth control after they would go off of it, basically don't feel attracted to their partner anymore. The man is not gonna perceive her as a woman. She doesn't smell like a woman anymore. When I went off of birth control, the first thing I noticed, the insane amount of sex drive that I suddenly had. Red light therapy actually works and there are even devices that you can put inside your vagina. So many doctors, they look ridiculously unhealthy and they're giving health advice. How do our listeners know whose advice to take? The healthier you are, the cleaner your body is, the more in tune you are, and a little change, you feel it. And welcome back to this week's Catamania episode. As many of you know, I am really into the whole subject of wellness, fitness, living a good life, biohacking, and human optimization. I haven't necessarily dived into that professionally myself, but luckily I have people around me who are really into that stuff. And in particular, I have one person pretty much who has shaped my view on wellness, diet, and I keep up with all of that stuff through her. So she's the one who always looks into things. She's the one who always researches stuff, tests everything, and, you know, posts about it on her social media or tells me about it. I learn from her and then I kind of jump on the wagon or the train, whatever that expression is, uh, to test it out on myself. And she is someone who you probably remember because she was on my podcast close to a year ago now, probably, and someone who has given great advice. And I thought it would be beneficial to bring her back on to chat about new things that maybe we haven't covered in the previous episode, as well as just to chat with her because she's an awesome human being. Her name is Maria Fastov, and she is a biohacker with a medical background. She was a traveling nurse in the United States and has worked in the, sort of to speak, a conventional medical field and also on the side implemented more of like an organic and natural way of living. So without further ado, enjoy this episode. If you do enjoy my podcast, subscribe, click the like button, you know the spiel, you know what to do. This podcast is presented by MBH TV. Shout out to everyone at MBH for helping me make this happen. Masha, Hi, welcome Christina. back to Catamania. <laughs> Thank you for having me. That's an amazing experience to talk to you and to share this conversation with other people. As you said, I'm a registered nurse in my nearest past. Um, maybe I will go back to it one, one day. And right now I'm a wellness coach and biohacker and I try to make my life and life uh, of people around me better. And you, I don't want to say finally, but you, <laughs> you are finally focusing on spreading that through your social media work, which is awesome. Because I think that like I said, like I'm not, I'm really into that stuff, but I don't particularly, and I know many people would agree with me. Um, I want to focus on other things that I'm good at, that I want to do. I don't necessarily want to like get an educational background, like an official educational background, right? In that area. So it's really awesome to like go on your page and see what I'm doing right and maybe see what I'm doing wrong and also just learn from you. Because obviously you're, you're like the definition of a health nut, I would say. <laughs> Thank you. Sometimes I will say like the stuff that you post, I'm like, I, I don't know if I wanted to know that, but now I know that. So, you know, it's like almost things that you don't want to be true, you know, like the glucose spikes in foods that we aren't aware of necessarily. But before we dive into like the tech, the technical aspect of things and a little bit more about diet, do you mind just like giving a brief description? I know you kind of gave it in the last episode, but I know the story of how you got on the path of wellness because I know that wasn't always the case. So what made you do that? Uh, my kids. When I got pregnant with my first son and um, I obviously stopped drinking, right? Like everyone who gets pregnant, they quit all the bad stuff and they try to incorporate. Hopefully everyone. Like, yeah, yeah. 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 
<laughs> at I least, hope so. <laughs> at least the thinking part of yeah, humanity. Yeah. And um, I started just eating healthier, what I thought at the time. And when my son was born, my birth experience was traumatic. And then a few episodes um, of my first months of life as a new mom were also traumatic. Um, in terms of like some medications that my son couldn't tolerate, then my son developed um, some kind of problems with dairy, so we all went dairy free. So basically from uh, eating my milk from my breast that I make, uh, the baby developed um, lactose intolerance, so I had to quit dairy in order for him to have human milk not affected by elements of cow's milk. So that was like first things that we incorporated. And when I started that journey, I saw the change, like my skin, I lost the weight and I started searching more into what things I can do differently. And then the whole diet changed. Uh, I went through sugar detox. I saw the huge difference of how my body felt. Uh, we went through some plant-based journey that, thank God, we dropped at the time, but it worked in the beginning. Honestly, um, any diet would work if you follow some kind of um, restrictions, right? right? If you if you it's restrict like an elimination some, yeah, thing. elimination diet, if you uh, eliminate the time frame when you eat. It worked for some people. Some people remove meat. Some people remove vegetables. Some people remove grain. Whatever works for you. That's why all the diets they show um, their benefits and the effect in the beginning because you just restrict things. You eliminate things from your diet. And this is what I saw in the plant-based in the beginning. And then over time, my hormones shifted from being all the time happy, healthy, horny. I would say to the period where I said, oh, maybe that's it. Maybe that's all with my sexual life, you know, maybe no more like sparkles. Oh, and snap. Or you had like, yeah, yeah, oh, I wow. Had that kind of situation when I thought, okay, maybe this is it. Maybe after having kids, this is how the sexual life looks like. Wow. And then I spoke to a few of my colleagues and they said, maybe you will want to reintroduce butter or eggs something into your diet uh, maybe you don't have a material to build hormones sexual hormones and when i reintroduced the butter my life never um, changed like my life never was the same right yeah and um my orgasms came back and my sexual life and my desire so it was basically only foods that I eliminated from my diet brought me to that state, not the kids not becoming a mom. Hmm. Very interesting. I wonder if it's the same thing, like you were, you just said diet, and I thought about, you know, there's a trend recently, I would say fairly recently, with carnivore diet, like people eating carnivore only. Yes, I know, and I know... Is it the and same? I know, yeah, I don't know. I know a lot of people who follow this diet, right. and they have short-term like good effects, I would right. say, right? They see benefits from it, but I'm not sure what we're going to see in five, 10 years. Like the same we saw with um, vegan diet, right. vegan lifestyle, plant-based diet, that there is very little amount of people, I believe, in, on planet Earth who really can thrive on it. There yeah. are some, and I know a few families who are really doing well. They had kids, they are raising the, their kids as a vegans. They live in Hawaii, but they live in a warmer climate. They are outdoors. They eat a lot of healthy fruits and vegetables, and they're available year round. But I'm not sure about people who live in Canada and like other parts of um, US where it's cold, or like in Russia or other Slavic countries, how are they going to thrive on it? Is it possible for them to thrive on plant-based diet? And the same, some people on the north who are developed eating a lot of animal uh, fat, a lot of animal protein, if you incorporate a lot of vegetables and remove that fat from them, how are they going to live? Mm -hmm. Is it going to be okay for them? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. We have to look at the all, all those aspects because people are different. We all like develop differently. Right. My father-in-law, I think I actually mentioned that to you once. My father-in-law, who has like zero background in, in like medicine or nutrition or wellness or anything like that, said something once that 
actually kind of makes sense, even though he doesn't have background in that stuff, uh, that you should eat the way your ancestors have been, have been eating. So like, if you, for generations, haven't been raised to eat a plant-based diet, most likely you're not going to be well fit to eat a plant-based diet unless you have some kind of condition that predispo that predisposes you, I guess, to it. Would you agree with that? Uh, I would just because just think about our ancestors. Remember how they ate? They had uh, the fast. Red caviar. Yeah, they ate. <laughs> yeah, but think of it. Uh, they ate meat when it was available. But right. then we have those like orthodox fast when we don't eat anything. And they were eating like. And sorry, don't eat anything means you still so you still eat yeah, like yeah, fish yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. <laughs> no, you don't. No, they actually the no? great lane, the great lane, the one that yeah. uh, comes from Maslinitsa, whatever the name. Oh is yeah, in yeah, English, yeah. Till uh, the Easter, forty days, you don't eat fish. You only allowed to eat fish, I believe, on like Wednesday something. Mm -hmm. But you basically plant based. And they didn't have vegetables at the time. The only thing they ate fermented vegetables. They ate a lot of grain. They ate all that porridge and whatever they cooked. And fermentation, that was their food. Right. They yeah, fermentation is big. That's right. Now we can get like tomatoes all year round, right? Yeah. In, so. in, like in Canada. Like I can, yeah. I, I mean, they're not, they don't taste delicious all year round. But the fact that I can get tomatoes in January, yeah. like that's no, pretty. Right now it's different, but... And how many of those fasts we had? A lot. It's mm -hmm. like four. I'm sorry, I don't like remember, I don't follow the calendar right. of the Orthodox Church. But they were always switching from plant-based to like omnivores. They were eating everything and meat and fish and whatever was available. And they ate seasonally. And everyone did. And this is what I believe we should follow. Mm. To eat your seasonal vegetables and fruits and whatever comes and as i know not all the uh, chicken were having their eggs and not all the birds were like laying their eggs year round it was only seasonal right. some seasons they're laying eggs the other seasons they don't and as i know goat and sheep they also also they don't milk them year round right they only milk them for some periods of time so they basically were switching from one to another, giving uh, the detox to the body, you know, kind of like just go maybe plant-based for a little bit mm -hmm. to let your body rest and then get back all your nutrients. Yeah, very interesting. Would you say like food here in, I mean, you've lived all over U.S. Are there places where there's better like produce, better food that you found? or like worse is it easier to get stuff in like maybe california oh definitely yeah yeah california is the best place yeah. where you want to eat in the in the united states they have year-round a great produce during the summer we had apricots uh, maybe three or four months of nectarines and peaches and uh, all other like cherries and vegetables and then that ends the other fruits come like plums pomegranate and uh, i remember persimons. watching your stories yeah. from 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 i i was in british columbia already british columbia is a little bit better than alberta but sasha like our friend sasha zvedeva I followed her for a little bit longer than, than you. And I remember watching her stories from Calgary, where it was like minus 30, as she would go to like farmer's market on Saturday in the middle of January and all these fresh fruits and vegetables. I was like, why am I living here in no, Siberia? But sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, so yeah no, that's definitely. New York is good during the summer and fall. Mm -hmm. A lot of fruits and vegetables. Florida is the opposite. The, the season in Florida starts in November and throughout the winter we have a lot of fruits and vegetables here. But then starting May or even April, we start getting the produce from other states because over here everything burned out, nothing grows here during the summer, only like tropical fruits. Right. So basically the best area if you want to eat good quality food and you want to have it year round, it is California. But we also traveled from the West, from LA, we drove through the country to Miami and there is no food in the middle of the country. There is meat, mm -hmm. but if you want to even have a side of salad, some restaurants say we don't have vegetables. Mm. And that surprised me a lot. And this is actually when I found out that carnivore is not going to work for me. So we drove through the Texas maybe for three or four days. 
and we were eating meat because this is what taxes right. is famous for. Yeah. We were eating meat and, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we were barely were able to find any veggies. I felt like crap. Really? Yeah. Interesting. And also I didn't exercise. Oh yeah. Yeah. The only thing I did like while I was charging my Tesla, I would like walk around the car and maybe do some squats and like I don't know, some yeah. light exercises, but I felt like crap without my salad and without exercise. That's yeah. definitely a thing. Yeah, that makes sense. See, it's a, but it's interesting how your body right away responded to it. I've met people before who it, it almost seems like they don't know what their body's telling them. And I feel like and I'm, I'm sure you will agree with me when I say this, like the more you take care of yourself, the more you are in tune with your body, the more you feel right away. Like you eat something like Alex and I, we, we're, we stay really healthy as much as we can. Like, you know, sometimes, you know, I can indulge in like a glass of wine or something like that, but like, but you look great. I can tell you both look great Thank you, you. because this is what I believe that if you're healthy in the inside, you look yes. beautiful outside. Yes. I agree with you. And likewise to you, when I saw you, I was, I mean, I've been following you, but like I saw you, I was like, oh my God. Um, but yeah, like I, we, you know, stay really healthy. We exercise. Uh, we never really indulge into any like sugars, especially like refined sugars. And I remember last year we were in Cancun airport and we forgot to, or didn't have time, ran out of time. We didn't pack anything to eat. Usually we pack something for the plane. And we had the most decent thing at the airport like we walked around and it was like the most decent looking thing and we didn't have time to like get a lounge or anything like that and it was like a burger and we both felt like shit after because it was like one of those again it looked like the healthiest option at least out of the ones that there were there but we had it and we right away felt sick and I was like isn't this interesting like the healthier you eat the healthier you are the faster your body responds to something that isn't healthy, probably because it gets used to a certain level of whatever it is that you need to get used to, right? But it's instant. So it's interesting that you right away felt you're like, no, no, this is not for me. And you know what I want to add to that, <clears throat> that people sometimes say, oh, you see you're healthy and you feel sick after you eat something bad. So I'm not healthy and I can't eat whatever and I don't feel like. And you know the reason why? They are not in tune with their bodies. Right. They don't know how it feels to feel good. And they are bad on top of another bad doesn't feel the difference. Right. And this is what I feel when I don't sleep, when I don't exercise, when I don't have enough water, like when I eat shitty food sometimes, I feel it right away. You guys feel it right away because the healthier you are, the cleaner your body is, the more in tune you are and little change, you feel it. Mm -hmm. And other people, they don't. Mm -hmm. And this is the difference between us. So we are on the right way. <laughs> Not to say that we're better than anyone, <laughs> but maybe this, hopefully this will inspire some people. Like oh, yeah. That's what I always try to do. And, you know, you and I talked about this even yesterday um, I had, during my podcast. I mentioned that, like, I didn't expect that I would ever get hate for, like, promoting working out and eating well. But I think it also triggers people because it takes, like, you need to take some personal responsibility over your body and be like, hey, I need to, like, make a change. I need to work out this is my responsibility it's much easier to look at somebody online and either get jealous or get i hate using that word but literally get triggered and be like well no you're promoting unhealthy beauty standards by doing that stuff right so how do you like living in miami by the way uh i actually like it because i like warm weather I like palm trees and I like that. We have ocean here that is available. Right. It's not like Bay Area where we live. Yeah, you have ocean somewhere like 30 minutes away, but you never go there because it's 30 minutes away. And over here, like right now, I live 10 minutes from the beach and nice. I go there at least twice a week right now. My goal is more often. And we have good restaurants. Not as good maybe and not that many as um, we had in California, but still there are good restaurants and Miami is changing. It's um, a lot of people from like yoga community, self-cautious people who promote healthy lifestyle, a lot of personal trainers. They moved here during the pandemic. It was a shift from New, from New York, n like North Jersey and um, California. So in Canada is, too. In Canada. Lots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a big change right now. And it's changing and I like the way it changes right now. Yeah. It seems like yeah, there are so many people into like all sorts of wellness. And there are restaurants. That, um, there is one place. Are we calling names? 
Yeah. No, I think so. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think okay. we can. Yeah. 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 There is one place. Doc- We're not advertising you, yeah. but if you would like, <laughs> if you'd like me to advertise you on my podcast, please reach out to me. <laughs> so the place calls Dr. Smood. Awesome place. They have, they make their own cashew milk. Imagine you, you come to the place and you don't have look at the ingredients. They just make their own cashew milk. They mark that their fish is wild caught. Okay. They mark what kind of bread is that? And they have the sourdough options. So yeah, they have a bunch of stuff that probably you wouldn't choose, but they have options for people who are thinking of what they're eating. Yeah. So that's awesome. That and is amazing. I'm seeing more of- and more restaurants pop up, like even in Mexico, uh, where we are, with like no seed oils. Oh, that's awesome. Like no seed oils restaurants. By the way, regarding seed oils... Can you, can we dive into that? Because I, whenever somebody asks me, like, I try not to eat seed oils, right? And whenever somebody asks me, I'm like, well, it causes inflammation. It's like, why? And I'm like, I don't know. It it just causes inflammation, right? Because I don't know the, the technicalities behind it. Yeah, let's talk about it, like, in general, the movement. Uh, When we talk all seed oils are bad, I don't, I do not agree with that. Because there are seed oils that we have been eating, like, uh, sunflower oil in our culture, in Slavic culture, mm-hmm. is a big thing. And we were okay with this when it was cold-pressed, unfiltered, and made the other way. Not mm-hmm. the way we have this, like, pressed uh, under high temperatures, going through different chemical kind of processes to extract as much oil as possible from that seed. And then we pack it in plastic bottles, who know what temperature was that oil, and then it go on the shelf, it stays there in like see-through container. No one knows what temperature it was transported to, especially when we talk about like state like Florida. Mm. How long was that oil in a hot plastic standing somewhere like in a truck? We don't know, right? But if you take organic seed, and you extract an oil and you add that raw oil that you stored in the fridge after you bought or after you made it yourself and you put a few spoons in your salad, nothing bad is going to happen. Right. But uh, what people are talking about, this is the ratio of omega-6 and omega-3 uh, fatty acids in those oils. So the more, uh, so basically the ratio, the healthy ratio, if I remember, it should be one to four mm-hmm. uh, omega trees to omega six. Mm-hmm. But right now in our modern American diet, like North American, I believe in Canada, it's probably the same. Uh, it's one to 64. And by lowering that number, like bringing it to the ratio it's supposed to be we are normalizing the balance of those oils so they don't become like they don't cause inflammation so this is not the oil itself this is the amount of the oil in those uh, omega-6 fatty acids of how much of those we have why do they cause inflammation like if you have the disproportionate amount of like what happens in your body uh, if you have the wrong amount of of I guess, oil, if you overdo it, or if it's not refined properly. Listen, probably biochemically, I'm not going to tell you what exactly happened. Because the, there's probably going to be a lot of terms that... Yeah. Um, the regular folk <laughs> who are not in the medical field will not understand. No, even for me, like, because I didn't learn, like, biochemistry, okay. like, in nursing school. It would be probably some question to the dietitian or biochemist of what exactly Well, the funny happened. thing is, I, I've spoken to dietitians before who... First of all, I've spoken to a dietitian before who told me that margarine is better than butter. And I was like, okay. Oh, yeah. <sighs> and then I've spoken to some dietitians who don't think that seed oils are any problem. Like they. Honestly, I have one guy who I uh, follow and I admire his knowledge. And he, he has a PhD in dietics. And um, he also says there is no problem. Right. But also, he eats a lot of junk. He works out like crazy, but he kind of overtrains the bad diet. Oh, you know? okay, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. There are those. We people. all have friends who are like, "Oh, I only go to the gym so that I can like drink my face off on yeah, the yeah, weekend." Yeah. Or yeah, so yeah, yeah. that's why probably if you are that kind of crazy fitness coach or whatever, like sportsman and you lift weights, you can overtrain the bad diet until certain age. Okay. But the older you are, the harder it is for the human body 
to overtrain your bad diet. It's still some processes that is going to happen in your body that even if you work out, I don't know, five hours a day and you build crazy muscle mass, it's not going to work for you well. So it only happens to a certain age. You can, you can, you can only do that to your body so much. And then after that, you, you will inevitably see the consequences. Oh yeah, definitely. Mm. Because you know, um, you cannot, um, improve your health very like to the high standards without the sport, without exercising. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is what actually helps you in an older age to bring you few more years of healthy lifespan. But with a diet, you cannot do it. You can kill your body with a bad diet, but if you want to improve, it's like only exercise. Mm. Exercise for improvement and not to kill yourself. It's just eliminating everything bad from your diet. Yeah, makes so, sense. Yeah, basically first we start from removing the junk and incorporating healthy foods. And then if we want to add good quality of life, add few years of like good quality, healthy lifespan. This is what, where the exercise come to us. Mm. Okay. I, I mean, it makes perfect sense and you feel good. Like, you know, you feel good after a workout. Oh yeah. It's hard maybe to get yourself going all the time or every single time I should say, but you feel so good. Just, you know, find a routine that works for you and do it. Like I always say, it's, you know, you, you What's that phrase I heard? Like, you know, the things you need to do to improve something, just do those things, you know? I do want to ask you, actually, uh, because I mentioned, you know, or we talked about how certain dietitians say one thing and then another thing, and then certain medical professionals say one thing and then another thing. What would be your advice for deciphering between what, what advice is the right advice, so to speak? You know that, like, there's like a funny video that somebody made that went viral. Um they basically took out snippets from various health and wellness like coaches or um, nutritionists online with completely contradicting views. Like one was like, you know, don't ever eat like vegetables, don't eat fruit. And then the other was like, fruit is essential for your diet. So they pasted, I don't know if you saw that, but they like pasted a whole lot of them into the camera and the guy was basically just like eating from an empty plate because he's like, okay, well, if I, if I listen to all of this advice, then I'm just going to not eat anything. That's the best, that's the best way. Just, just maybe a little bit of water here and here and there. And that's it. How do you decipher somebody like, for example, I am not again, a professional in this area. I try to do whatever works best for me. How do I and our listeners know whose advice to take and what works best? So for me, there are two things, no, three things that I, how I look at the professionals who I want to take an advice from. Number one, does this person has a proper degree? Mm -hmm. Like, is this doctor an MD, registered nurse, registered dietitian from the establishment that our one of the countries in the world trusts, right? So there is a license behind the talking professional. This is number one. Number two, does this person only follows the rules of that establishment or this person went and get education somewhere else, some kind of integrative medicine education, like went through some courses um, and got additional degree and alternative views on the subject mm. or this person only follows the textbook and um, I don't know like policies of the hospital or whatever he works for. And number three, how this person look like? Do I want to look like this person? Oh my God. This is like straight into, what is that called? Like the, you know, the thing that you put on the, the wall and you throw da darts. darts. Yeah. Like the darts <laughs> straight into the middle there. Uh, Alex and I were talking about this just earlier today. So many doctors that I know are some of the fattest people I know and they look ridiculously unhealthy. Like, sorry to say it, but they are ridiculously unhealthy and they're giving health advice. How do you reconcile that? Like, I know, you know, so many of them that you look extremely unhealthy. You very clearly don't work out. You don't take care of your body. You eat like crap, but you give health advice. 
I mean, many of us have seen that even during the pandemic, right? Like a lot of the health officials in Canada was so, I don't know. I'm, I mean, the States was like all over the place, right? But in Canada, like I was looking at these health officials and I'm like, I'm not going to take health advice from you. I don't trust you. Like there's absolutely no way. So it's very true. You know, you're not going to take advice from a personal trainer who doesn't look like they work out. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, that's... And that's you know really my right. favorite, Andrew Huberman, right? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. I look at him and like, if I were a man, I would like to look like you, yes. are, you look like. And uh, Peter Atia, another one of my favorite like doctors and people who speak about like health, public health and healthy lifestyle. Look at them. Mm -hmm. They look like for what they preach for, you know? Exactly. Yeah, that's an, one of the reasons why I really like following you because I'm like... You're a mother of two. You you kind of look like you're like maybe 25, 26, you know. Sasha's very much the same thing, right? She's got four kids. She looks you like you practice what you preach and it obviously works on you, right? So there's like that level of instant trust that you have with 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 what you do, yeah, right? Yeah, to me it's number one or sometimes even values people come uh, to you. I I believe all the influencers, not only like healthy lifestyle or doctors, uh, you look at the person, what they talk about, the values. You know, I found you when you were talking about like, oh, I paid for the first date something. Oh, second date, you are paying. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, something like that video. I'm like, oh, my God, this is my first. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> and and that. the same is just only one phrase and you yeah. are, understand the whole value of yeah. the person. The same in, in the world of medicine too yeah obviously if we talk about something serious if it's like cancer alzheimer's alzheimer's, alzheimer's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um other like serious stuff yeah. uh, obviously you might not want to look at how they look like those professionals right yes. because they never experienced that themselves they just learn and study it like in the lab or their patients this is different but if we talk about lifestyle yeah, you definitely want to take an advice from the person who looks like they are healthy. Yeah, yeah. How how did you do it? How did you get there? Yeah, because you're obviously doing something right. I agree with you. Yeah, it's it's an interesting it's an interesting game, but I think that would be like my number one priority for sure. Do I want to even companies right? Like they sell life, they they sell a certain feeling that you have. Like any kind of product, you get attached more so to the feeling that you have from it than the product. It's the same with people. I agree with you. I wanted to chat about something and so so two things I, I'm not I never rehearse or like prepare my interviews or questions but two things that I really wanted to touch on uh, with you um, let's dive into first and foremost the less spicy one but still like a good one so glucose and specifically you recently mentioned something about uh, oat milk and how it was like I think you said that was like one of the biggest scams. Let's talk about a oat milk because I used to absolutely love oat milk. I mean, I still do. If I didn't know the harm that it brings, I would still probably be drinking it. Um, and also what spikes our glucose levels that maybe we aren't aware of and how does that all work? Okay, so first of all, I highly recommend everyone who can afford it to get the continuous blood glucose monitors mm. because it's all so unique. Yes, we have some patterns that we can see that, okay, most people react like this to certain foods. If it's high uh, carbohydrates or high sugars or whatever, it all becomes sugars in your stomach. So basically if you eat buckwheat, our favorite Slavic food, yeah. you think, oh, it is savory. It's probably not going to spike my blood sugar, but it will because all the carbohydrates, they become sugars in our stomach and our body doesn't care was it sweet in the beginning or not it still uh, will react to it in the way that it's going to spike your blood sugar uh, and number one that we can do to see how we react to different foods just to monitor and see how your body actually deals with this mm -hmm. uh, if you have a higher muscle mass like for example i eat rice and my husband that has uh, pretty high muscle mass, he eats rice. For me, it's going to be spiked to like 160, 180. And my husband is going to be just bump, like 130. And that's it. He's fine. What's but the what normal are, glucose level? Like what's the number? So our fasting in the morning should be below 100. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. from 70 to 100. Um, every, when you wake up. So when you wake up. Yeah, some people, they have uh, this like morning glucose spike that our liver uh, gives out the glycogen. Glycogen? Oh my God, how is that in Oh English? yeah, gly- glyco... I learned it in English, actually, and uh, I know the glycogen in Russian, and I'm just thinking right now, like, yeah, glycogen. Glucathion. I think the, is no, 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 glycogen. Oh. I think it calls glycogen in English. I was going to flex, if, like, the yeah. one term that I know, <laughs> yeah. but it didn't work. Yeah, if, if, <laughs> if I mean pronounce it, just forgive my Russian soul for that. So basically... Masha from Russia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, uh, that acts like the glucose and our body and those people actually can skip the breakfast because they just run on that sugar that naturally the liver releases. Um, Were they the ones who invented intermittent fasting? Maybe. <laughs> maybe. And like advertised it as like a healthy thing for everybody? <laughs> yeah, so that's why I believe it's not for everybody because right. some people, they really need to eat something in the morning to feel energized. Right. Uh, so, and then when you eat food, anything your blood sugar shouldn't go above 140 and it's also the how fast that goes up and how fast it goes down after your like one hour uh, peak Mm -hmm. and uh, if that all sugar cleared out of the system within two hours so there are multiple factors that we look at and in the case of the oat milk so what we are doing, so our carbohydrates, they have some fiber in it and actual uh, carbs, right? Mm-hmm. So, and when we do like juicing, for example, so we take the whole fruit that has water, that has sugars and fiber, and we remove fiber, or in the case of oat milk, I call it oat juice, we basically take the carbohydrates from the actual oats and we remove fiber. There is nothing to stop that um, carbohydrates enter our intestine and from there go to our bloodstream and spike the blood sugar. Because in case of the whole fruit or whole grain, we have that fiber that prevents that actually lining um, our stomach Mm -hmm. walls and it prevents from it to go fast and rapidly absorbed. So, and this is the problem with oatmeal because it is carb. If we take any nut milk, it doesn't have this high carbohydrate content and it doesn't give that spike. This is the same that happens. uh, That's why I don't recommend anyone drinking uh, fruit juice, even carrot juice. You would think it's a vegetable, but carrot juice also spikes the blood sugar. It's better eat the whole carrot. It's better eat the whole orange because it will have the fiber. That makes sense because think about like how many even like apple, right? Like how many apples can you eat in one sitting versus how many apple how how many juice yeah, like and how fast. Just think of it. You just like Yeah. And that's it. And all that apple, all that sugar from one apple that you would take time to eat and to chew will just end up in your uh, intestine like pretty fast. Mm. So that's why not a good idea. If you really like it. If you cannot find an alternative and you want to go for your oat milk, eat the huge salad, right? Yeah, eat the huge salad and have your oat milk as a dessert after you have a whole meal with a big salad, with um, protein, fat, and that will probably help you. And after that milk, go and work out or just walk. So does salad sort of neutralize the glucose spike? It, it works as a lining of the gut. Like I said, in the case of the whole grain, when you eat the whole grain, it has that fiber that lines out your intestine and doesn't let uh, that carb to go in very fast. Like because oh, it becomes okay. like sugar in you. Like any carb, it's sugar in your stomach. And um, if you eat insoluble fiber, it kind of lines up the walls of your intestine and obviously that sugar still makes it around but it takes more time and some of that still like stays in your intestine it doesn't go all inside of your stream hmm okay interesting so if somebody also like when you look at desserts for example and eating desserts it's best to basically eat a dessert like right after food yeah not like you have that window of about like hour and a half, two hours, but the be- best is to eat within one hour. 
Mm. Like you eat your appetizer, you eat your main course, and you finish um, your with the dessert. Even from the perspective of oral health, the longer you have acid in your mouth, the longer you eat, the longer you sip on something, the like the worse it for your teeth, because it's not the sugar that kills your like your teeth it's actually the bacteria that is attracted by that sugar in your mouth and that sugary taste oh interesting is it why you know like i've heard of that if you eat pineapple it like destroys your enamel it, it that, might is that true is it, that why like because it there's something about apple like, cider these... vinegar is actually too or like if you're sipping on a coffee or lemon water the entire day there is nothing good about it for your oral health so you should like if you want to drink your coffee especially for people who love frappuccinos and all that sugary stuff mm -hmm. you should quickly do it like within 20 minutes just rinse chug your it mouth. just like you would chug <laughs> i don't know a beer or something <laughs> yeah just uh, wash your mouth rinse your mouth and yeah and don't don't snack on foods don't sip on something um that has acid or sugar into it it's not gonna be good hmm. and if you're constantly sipping on the calories it's also not going to be good for your pancreas. So constantly body needs to clear out that sugar and release the insulin. So like space it out. Yeah, I, be I, I personally believe in two, three meals a day. It depends what better works for you. Okay. I, for me, it's perfectly two, two meals a day. I work fine on that. Do so, you find that you need to eat more when you work out? Yeah, but I eat bigger meals. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. I just I just stuff my face until like I cannot and I pass out almost yeah but I <laughs> oh my god I'm just picturing you go work out and then you just sit and eat like a giant meal and pass out but that makes sense actually because I find like depends on how I train I've toned down my training quite a bit like I as you know I've been a lot more into the whole cycle syncing approach and training as a woman and not no, a that's man because awesome. uh, before I used to like do deadlifts and lift heavy and definitely train like a man which maybe for a certain body aesthetic is good if you're if you're striving to have that super muscular like more manly look more masculine look I should say but definitely not what I was hoping to achieve um, and I find that the results are better if I do like a cycle approach. Cause I don't think we're meant to work out like crazy during our menstrual oh, yeah. phase and stuff like that. Right. But anyways, I noticed that like during my ovulation, for example, when I do more cardio, it's almost like, it's funny because like I'll do a cardio workout and then I'll come home and I'll be like, I want to eat everything, like all the carbs. And it's almost like I'll just cancel out my workout if I follow my appetite levels right now. But it also depends on what you eat, right? Like if you do more of like a protein rich meal and you actually nutritionally speaking, fill your body with good stuff, then it's fine, right? As opposed to like if you go to a bakery and get, you know, a Have giant. you seen my, um, I call it beef scramble breakfast. Have you seen it? I posted on stories. I don't think so. So I basically take uh, organic grass fed ground beef and I buy the... Um, um, how you call it cauliflower rice okay and i just saute it together sometimes i just put some carrots and onions and if i eat that for breakfast probably next time i want to eat is going to be like late evening it's just enough you know it's just enough my protein. husband's gonna love that alex is gonna be all over that like ground <laughs> beef for breakfast yeah i call it beef scramble yeah wow so i do like cauliflower some vegetables whatever i have in the fridge i just shred it there and your frozen cauliflower and i usually eat it with a side of salad just to feel it like fresh and juicy and for dessert i might have some whatever seasonal fruit with um peanut butter on top and that's it and if i eat balanced meal like that and i know if i get a move after that i will probably put some i don't know I don't eat rice much lately, mm. maybe sweet potato or some beans, you know, to have some carbs and that's it. Hmm. But if I'm going to be sitting, I know sometimes there are days that I sit a lot. Um, I just eat mostly um, fiber and uh, protein and fat. I don't do much of a carbs, but in a form of fruits only. Mm -hmm. How does it feel 
not to work at the hospital at the moment and do fully wellness stuff and not 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 to co for lack of a better word commingle like the traditional medicine of a hospital and then also like the sunny beautiful way of life of being outside of the hospital no honestly I, i'm enjoying it right yeah. now sometimes i miss it especially you know when i see the scene sometimes something is happening mm -hmm. uh, i like that you adrenaline. like the excitement yeah, yeah i like the <laughs> adrenaline part of it especially i'm labor and delivery nurse and i always say labor and delivery uh it's an emergency room for pregnant because you never know when those people are gonna walk in how they're gonna walk in because anything that happens to a pregnant woman It's, an it's emergency. like it's gonna be emergency and they're gonna come probably after 21 week they come to our unit they don't come to emergency room they come to our unit mm. so and sometimes i miss that feeling of like adrenaline needed to jump in and help and resolve the problem mm -hmm. but um i enjoy that i can actually uh, share the knowledge that I have to the people because I see how it changed my life, how it changed lives of my circle, of my closest friends and my clients who I work with. And um, yeah, right now I do consultations and I see how people achieve their results and it's awesome. I like the feedback, you know, this is what I run on. A little bit less adrenaline. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do you compensate it in different ways? Like uh the I, adrenaline what was yeah. i remember there was one thing that you posted what was it um oh yeah so i i made a video about like how if it's like non-organic i won't eat it if like the beef is not like grass-fed you know farm raised like special you know hugged cow and you know all that kind of stuff i won't eat it but like i'll get botox and you were saying like And I'm speeding to work. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm a health nut. Like, I won't eat anything, but I'll speed to work. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes yeah. I was, especially, I worked 12-hour shifts. And for me, the time to sleep was really precious, you know? I needed, like, my eight hours, at least seven and a half hours of sleep. Yeah. And I would think that this is good for my health. I need to sleep. And then I jump in the car and I just needed to go really like 80, 100 miles an hour just to make it on time to work. <laughs> and I realized, oh my God, this is just a nonsense. Just like one mistake can cost me a life and all those like sleeping beauty hours and uh, all this stuff is not going to matter. And I like that kind of driving, but I try not to. <laughs> I like that kind of driving. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Yeah. It's, I mean, I always say like, I, I make fun of myself for those things, right? As long as you recognize them and just balance it But out somewhere. Honestly, look, um, people always say to me, oh, Maria, you're like so strict in something. Uh, you cannot do this. You cannot do this. Guys, I eat croissants. Like, <gasps> you eat croissants? Uh, yeah. Oh my God. Uh, yeah, so I can eat pizza. I can go to bed at 2 a.m. in the morning. So it's, but that part of my life, it doesn't need advertisement. Everyone can do it. So yeah. this is the reason maybe, and I show it. It's not like I'm not showing it at all. I show it. It's just, why do I need to advertise pizza croissants and go into bed at 2 a.m. So people will think, oh, if she does it, I can do it. And it's not going to make a change. And the more I show you of things that probably you need to work better on, mm -hmm. maybe that will make a change. That will make a shift in someone's perception of what is the healthy lifestyle is. And we're not perfect. And that's okay if you choose to like exercise every day, like eat healthy, go to bed on time, but to do botox, but let that be your one thing that will yeah. make you happy, that will make you um, really psychologically healthy. Because yeah. what if you look at yourself in the mirror and you're not going to like the way you look and it's going to be so annoying that it's going to destroy your mental health. Yeah. Pick one thing for you yeah. and go Pick your poison, yeah. right? That whole thing, yeah. I believe if, if 80% of the life, this like rule, like 2080, yeah. if 80% of the life you do the right thing, you're going to be overall healthy. And okay, let Botox be your thing. Thank you. Oh my I'll, God. I'll keep crossing. No, I feel... <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, is your poison croissant then? Yeah, probably some sweet foods that yeah. I enjoy, but I like, but you know, for me, it's like more like a ritual. I need to go to good bakery. Like right. I cannot eat whole foods croissants, you know, like with a bunch of stuff. I need to find out that they make it from the French flour, like exported from France. Yeah. And I really enjoy something like, what, what, like toast with uh, foie gras, maybe not <sighs> the 
<laughs> maybe it's not the there's like, the russian in you <laughs> like you, you know why russian because i could totally picture you in france because you know how russian aristocracy and french aristocracy were like oh yeah basically yeah, the yeah. same aristocracy and like even tolstoy if you read tolstoy it always used to annoy me why would you write pages in french when you could have just written it in russian <laughs> And then you had to translate it, but he was so extra about it. But I could totally see you in Paris with, you know, with and a I, little I, beanie, I, with yeah. a croissant. Like and my... I love Paris and I love yeah. French food. And I think if you asked me, if you asked me, like, where is the best food in the U.S., I said California. If you asked me where is the best food in the world, I would say France, mm. especially south of France. Oh, my God, I cannot. Isn't it interesting that they eat all the carbs in the world they smoke same with it they smoke like crazy and they look good and their kids secondhand smoke because they smoke in front yes. of kids and they still healthier than we are here. why what what the <clears throat> fuck is happening i think the part of it is um emotional st state of like well-being they don't overwork like we are here yeah. in north america they have their time for pleasure true and uh, they don't stress much. Even if you read books about how they raise their kids, they literally, they throw them on the playground, they wear Throw heels. them on the playground? <laughs> <laughs> no, Masha, tell me more about it. <laughs> yeah, and they, and they literally, yeah. like, they, they spend, you know how American moms, they're running over here yeah. around the playgrounds, like wiping their kids' asses and all the time. And in Europe, they don't do that. <laughs> They don't do that. In Europe, they are more relaxed, you know, about everything. They're stress-free environment. Even today, I went to do my hair, and she's like, oh, you are so relaxed. I'm like, because life is short. Yeah. And she was late, and I know that I might be late to this uh, mm -hmm. podcast, but I'm like, why should I stress? Because I have, if, if you look at my ring, I have daytime stress very high, and I'm working on it because this is part of our health. Yeah. If we're not going to go to, I don't know, church, meditation, some kind of friend circle, uh, find your own community, maybe, I don't know, go cheer for the team, whatever mm -hmm. sport you choose, just feel that you're part of something bigger, Yeah. that there is some kind of higher power that you might not going to understand at full how it works yeah. because of your primitive I don't know. Limited like, human mind thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, it, it is limited. We, I, I think sense of community is huge in, in Europe and it's definitely, uh, we're missing it. I feel like in the States, I mean, I haven't actually lived in the States, but A, you have better weather in a lot of places in the US than in Canada. I'm, I'm, I'm comparing it to Canada. I'm also just kind of bitter about Canada right now. So it sounds <laughs> like I'm hating on Canada. I'm not hating, but... In in US you have places it seems like just from like people I talk to who've lived here, you you can you can have your own community you you can strive to have a healthier lifestyle in Canada too but a the weather there is really harsh and b I've noticed that it's much harder to have that whole community aspect of like just the lifestyle of this is my community this is the way you know my children well, what are. What about hockey fans? You have a lot of hockey there. <laughs> in Canada yeah, and I think actually. those people honestly um, I my husband is I, I don't know if I can call him a fan of Barcelona but probably he is he, yeah. he really loves this team and doesn't matter who plays there even before Messi played in Barcelona it was his team and uh, when we went to Barcelona we went to the stadium and I literally sat there and I cried I even have a yeah. video of it because I'm very sensitive to like emotions energy, yeah. and Isn't energy. Isn't it crazy how like... And those people, mm -hmm. even guys yeah. wearing the um, ties and suits, they were cheering and singing songs with those like fans together, the whole stadium. And I'm like, oh my God, this is a community. Yeah. Those people, they talk to each other. They don't know each other, but they know that they belong to something yeah. together. Yeah. And they come there every game and they get that feeling and they cheer for their team. And we unfortunately are losing it right now. Mm. It's less and less of that um, people that are connected there are less neighbors who talk to each other. There are people in the buildings who don't know each other. They don't know their names. And uh, people stopped going to churches a lot because, I mean, probably churches didn't do a good job um, of being 
honestly like true yeah. to their religion and whatever they preach yeah. but um in new communities there is still an embryos they are just started forming you know those like yoga communities right. people who like meditate together or even go like puddle boarding whatever like skiing together they are still not as strong as a church used to be for us as a humanity so we need to make our ways to those places where we feel that we belong to something bigger yeah and it's a big part of our health and i think europe has it more yeah yeah i agree with you it is interesting like you you know that meme like i go to italy and i eat all the carbs drink all the wine smoke all the cigarettes and look fabulous and then i like come back to north america and like smell air and i gain weight you know <laughs> oh the other thing uh is about even gluten i recently learned that content of gluten in uh, european how you call that grain uh wheat or yes yeah wheat, huh? <laughs> wheat. yeah it's much lower than the gluten content of our uh, north american wheat. i've heard about that it's yes. like one thing uh, that also chemicals and pesticides that we spray over our foods mm -hmm. it's much heavier here in the states than it's in europe i've heard that a lot of people who are gluten intolerant in us if they go to europe they eat bread and they don't like everything is fine even dairy it, it dairy Pe yeah too. the yeah. same people here they eat they have like acne and all that stuff they go to europe and they don't have it even if they eat dairy even they eat cow's dairy because it's different dairy different type of casein uh the protein that in the milk over here we have a lot of breeded cows mm -hmm. and they have mutation of that gene that is have you seen that a2 milk thing ever no did you pay attention so it's but right in canada now. our milk situation is so fucked i'll tell you mm -hmm. in a second but you guys have a better situation here in the us <laughs> so basically right now it became like a marketing but mm -hmm. some people they don't tolerate that a2 form of casein okay uh yeah. because we are used to they don't tolerate a1 mm -hmm. and because we used to our human milk um goat milk sheep milk uh, it has all this A2 type of protein and we are used to it and we're okay with it. But when they did the like breeding and stuff, uh, it's mutated. Mm. And over here in the US, there are more cows with this A1 type of casein. That is, there are some debates still in uh, scientific society, but there is some evidence that shows that it's not good for our gut. Mm. And you know how our health is developed actually in the gut, our immunity, how many hormones and neurotransmitters are formed in the gut. So basically, if you fucked your gut, probably all your health is going to go south. So number one thing we have to work on is gut health. Interesting, especially, you know, I've talked a lot about birth control on my podcast and I always emphasize that I'm not particularly interested, in, not interested, I am interested, but I'm not referencing necessarily when birth control is being talked about in a medical, like for a medical necessity, so to speak, to, to treat a disease, which I know it's debatable whether or not it treats a disease. I'm talking about specifically the way it's being prescribed here to young women, just because they're young women, like just, oh, you're 16, you're going to be put on birth control. But I've heard that that's one of the major, um, detriments to gut health birth control oh yeah it's i'm a registered nurse who yeah. worked in labor and delivery and like obstetrics is my field and i'm huge uh how i would say okay i'm against it yeah. so yeah. i'm against it sometimes maybe if this is an informed consent if yeah. woman knows what is going to bring her that is going to shut down her ovulation that is going to change the way she thinks the way she smells the way she acts and uh, even that the man around her is not going to perceive her as a woman because she doesn't smell like a woman anymore wow yeah, like, and you know, in our society right now, we don't have a lot of women that smell like women because the way we smell when our hormones are like basically shut down, shut down it's different. And our men, they don't even know on the level of 
how he was unconscious maybe mm -hmm. that right we don't smell it like oh you smell bad you smell good it's like pheromones. We just yeah 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 yeah, pheromones, yeah, right? pheromones. Yeah, yeah, yeah we basically just go around and we kind of like we maybe don't think about it but we peak our partner by the way the partner smells as well as yes. other factors and imagine there are a bunch of women walking around without their natural smell right and our men basically they don't even know how the real woman smell right and how we attracted to each other without those hormones working properly so we basically can pick our own partner and their own partner can pick us yeah i've talked i had a um, she's a health coach who she almost died um i think it was only a few weeks after she was put on birth control uh gina bontempo she's now a mother of almost two she's gonna give birth in a few months here but um, she was talking about a study that came out recently about how, um, A, there was many, many, many studies that I've seen online. I mean, you guys can Google it, our listeners, especially those of you who are skeptical, but basically like, um, many women who chose a partner while they were on birth control after they would go off of it, they basically don't feel attracted to their partner anymore because you're more likely to be attracted to a more like feminine guy with more feminine features. And then when you go off of birth control, you become more attracted to like a masculine guy. And then also that it is more likely to make you bisexual. Oh yeah, I read the two. Yes. Yeah, like as a woman, you are more likely to be attracted to women while you're on birth control. Yeah, I read, I read about it too. And you know what is the worst? That basically um, in a hospital setting, after a woman gave birth, uh, the, one of the first questions they ask them, um, what is the method of contraception you're going to choose? And they put them on pill right away, right there. Wow. So basically she's not going to have sex for the next, at least six weeks. At least we hope, you know, we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, after I look at their vaginas, I'm like, you better not have sex or anything vaginally because you just need to give your body time to heal the that big of a head just went through it, just let it heal. But some of them do uh, have sex like almost right after they give birth. And yeah, and doctors put them on birth control on a peel or put the implants like right in the hospital within two, three days after they give birth. I'm oh, like, wow. Why? In the world, it is happening. And you know what doctors say in uh, providers like midwives? Oh, otherwise we're going to lose her. She's probably not going to show up to her appointment and um probably not gonna come and then next time she gonna come like pregnant and might want uh, abortion so we prevent abortions by doing that wow so it's obviously very com commercial driven profit yeah. driven it has to be because otherwise wow okay that's very interesting i have gotten a lot of hate for talking about that and it's funny because People always say like, well, you're not a medical professional. You're not qualified to talk about that. And I'm like, I was on it for seven years and it fucked me up. It made me into like a totally different person. And I, then I went off of it. Thank God I chose a, you know, partner while my brain was still somewhat <laughs> functioning properly, I guess. Cause like, you know, but hello, like I was on it for seven years and I kept bringing it to my doctor's attention and he would just dismiss it and be like, oh, maybe we'll put you on a different one. And then, you know lots of women I know in my life have had horrible experiences with it when they would go off of it, when they were on it. And it's like, well, you're not qualified to talk about it. Really? You are like, <laughs> Oh, you know when, so I'm qualified to talk about it, but, when, talk I about talk, but yeah. when I talk about it, I also get, Oh, what kind of nurse you are? Right. Yeah. So they all your opinion find... doesn't match with ours. <laughs> Dismissed. <Yeah>. Canceled. <laughs> yeah. So basically, yeah, people don't care. So they, they just look the reason why you cannot talk about it no i right. can and you can and everyone needs to deliver this message we have at least our own experiences i also had it was very short because it never worked for me and i caught it like right away it was in russia i started taking them um and my breast hurt so bad i'm like no i i'm not gonna take it and over here i was on the pill once and for the months i was taking it i had zero sexual desire yeah like yeah zero. oh my god that was the biggest and, thing i noticed and i'm too. like nope it's not gonna work for me i when i went off of birth control the first thing i noticed was the insane amount of sex drive that i suddenly had 
Yeah. Imagine. Fascinating. No, because like, just think of it. Like when you have your uh, high sex drive and what is the norm for the woman? So basically right after your period is over, for some women, it's even like during the period, they already have that desire. Until the ovulation, you should be horny. So if you are not, there is something wrong with you. Right. And you basically shut down that ovulation, yeah. you know, and you shut down that ability of a woman to be horny. Like, what is wrong with you people? We have to work on the better methods of birth control. Yeah. Yeah. We have to come up with something like we have to educate women and men more. Yeah. Okay. On how we like don't want to, how we don't get pregnant if we don't want to. It takes to. two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For sure. Speaking about sex. Let's talk about sex, baby. Let's, Let's talk about you and me. Uh, we're almost actually at our time. This is insane how fast this went by. But I did mention, uh, or I did want to chat with you about something that I think you hosted a workshop on recently, biohacking and sex. Oh, yeah. Intriguing. <clears throat> Intriguing. I should have started with that subject, <laughs> not end, but this will be like a spicy note to end on. So, yeah, there are two ways it works. Yeah. First of all, you can biohack your own health by having sex. So you th Just think of, about it. To be healthy, you need to eat two, three times a day and you have that schedule, yeah. right? Sometimes even if you don't want to eat, you're kind of like, mm, I maybe have something like light, but I still eat. Mm -hmm. But what about sex? This is a huge component of our like health and our life. And just think of it, every one of humans was born due to sex. Yeah. You know, like you cannot Hello? avoid it. Yeah, you cannot avoid it. <laughs> yeah. But you cannot avoid it. <laughs> Do you try to? Does anyone? <laughs> yeah, but for some reason we don't talk about it. We can go yeah. without it. Some people can go without it for months and it's okay, yeah. but it's not okay. That should be like sex hygiene. Like we have uh, mouth hygiene, we have uh, sleep hygiene, we have to have sex hygiene. Yeah. If you're okay with the partner you leave, what I wish is the case, mm -hmm. you know, otherwise why would you live with your partner? Right. It should be four times a week. It doesn't have to be like, think the same as the food. It doesn't have to be three course meal or five course meal every time you eat. It can like, be a snack, right? you know, but it has to be in your life. And it, appetizer. Yeah, it's an appetizer. It can be an appetizer, it can be an entree, yeah, but it's got to be something. It's got to be something because <laughs> it's going to make your life different. Right. It's, you, you're going to feel the, the same like exercise. It's going to make you want to leave. Yes. It's going to trigger some hormones. It's going to help your pelvic floor if we talk about women, right? Because your muscles, if you don't use them, you lose them. Right. And your muscles in the pelvic floor, they're the same, like the muscles in the entire body, the same the face. If you don't, if you don't use your muscles, over time, they're going to drop. So basically, this is one side how it works. The other way uh, is actually biohacking into the healthier life into the sex life because some people over time they lose some abilities due to mineral um deficiency due to vitamin deficiency due to aging and due to again not using your um, organs and your muscles and you kind of feel oh my god i'm off i don't have sexual desire and sometimes we talk about like erectile dysfunction and men but women have it also mm. we have it it's just our erectile tissue looks different and sometimes right. when you don't have desire this is what happened Hmm. You, the, I heard uh, one uh, speaker, she's, she said that, okay, men's erectile tissue is like banana, but ours is like donut. It's just shaped differently and it's located differently, but it's still there. And basically your lack of desire is the erectile dysfunction in a woman. And uh, one thing probably that I can like share that is harmless if people start searching uh, for themselves is the nitric oxide um, supplements. Mm -hmm. Basically, nitric oxide is not something you can take, but you can take some supplements that boost nitric oxide production in the body. Over the years of our lifespan, it decreases. And to boost sexual desire, you can take uh, those supplements and... Um, boost your health you boost your sex life hmm. 
also there are different therapies that people can use there are red light therapy for your organs for men and for women and different like wave stimulation uh, therapies have you heard about sunbathing your genitals I heard How do you about, feel about that. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I didn't see any research that backing it up. Right. Yeah, but there are uh, some stuff about red light, te- red light therapy that it actually works. And there are even devices that you can put inside your vagina and turn on the red light. Yeah, that's Damn. <laughs> help you also i don't know if you heard have you heard about prp for the face when they yes. take your blood they spin it so you can do the same for your genitals and it calls p shot and o shot for men and for women when you can take your own blood spin it get the plasma and inject it around the genitalia and it has beautiful um, effects and it actually backed up by the science there are studies that shows that it can help to brighten wow. up the sex life. To brighten it up. <laughs> it's interesting though, you know, your genitals are part of your body just like your hand and your like finger is. But for some people, for some reason, people get really awkwarded out when we talk about it. Yeah, people cannot even name their genitals yeah. by the name. They, they say down there. Yeah. How is it down there? And I remember I had one patient. Um, I don't remember what I asked her. Oh, it was some, oh, her, the head of the baby was crowning. And we asked her, do you want to touch the head of the baby? She said, down there? So she was disgusted by the... Interesting. The, even the picture that she can touch herself by her, like, genitals. Yeah. That was pretty terrifying for me. And wow. how many women they cannot even touch or look at themselves. Yeah. How maybe traumatized they were or the world they were raised yeah. in. It's pretty hard. Yeah. Well, I think the moral of the story is uh, a donut and a banana needs to be <laughs> eaten. <laughs> needs to be used. <laughs> needs to be used. <laughs> I love that. Well, Masha, thank you so much. Um, I think having an hour episode is not enough to talk about this stuff. That's for sure. <laughs> so hopefully at some point in the near future, if you're still in Miami, I can have you back on and we can dive into more spicy subjects and just in general subjects of wellness and health. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Christina. It was always a pleasure talking to you. And I love how we ended it with a laugh. This is what you are to me. Like when you smile, you make your life longer. Yes. Hey, that's true, actually. Physiologically. And, on so all levels, you, and right? you're, you're basically like the life, um, healthy lifestyle coach. You know, <gasps> this is what you do. Really? <laughs> oh, thank you. That's amazing. I love that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that in my bio description. Uh, Hugh humorous life coach or something like that humorous yeah. wellness coach <laughs> thank you i appreciate you saying that and thank you to our wonderful listeners to tuning into this episode i will see you next week and in the meantime enjoy your life enjoy this episode i hope you enjoyed this episode and stay blessed mm-hmm.